Good evening guys and welcome to another GSR Reacts video. Tonight, what have we got? Mojo's top 10 actual scary moments from paranormal investigation shows. Oh, we like paranormal investigation shows. Let's get cracking. <laughs> Number 10, Walking Full Body Apparition, Ghosts of Morgan City. The this team Ghosts, of investigators set rare. out to solve the unexplained phenomena occurring in Morgan City, Louisiana. In the third episode, the trio responds to reports of strange activity at Idlewild Plantation. It has everything between rituals and a floating blue shirt. A uh, blue shirt was just floating with no hands, no head, no legs. With the building supposedly empty, investigator Ben is completely caught off guard as he reviews electronic voice phenomenon EVP footage. The camera reveals a full-bodied, semi-transparent apparition crossing the hallway. Such evidence is so rare, it may easily be contested, but the crew determined the figure possibly belonged to a nurse from the early 1900s. With the pieces coming together, the wandering apparition becomes even more chilling. You can literally see through it, dude. You, you can, can see, see the background it. as it walks through right there on the bottom. Number nine, Trent. Um, sure, no, let's, let's just chuck that away. Apparition. The amount of energy it takes for a spirit to apparate like that and show themselves would be phenomenal, which is why it's so rare. And even the narrator says it's rare. Unfortunately, some of these people I've seen on other shows and for what they actually do and how they do it, it doesn't fill me with confidence. That's not to say that let's debunk it immediately, straight away. It's possible they could see an apparition, but although they seem shocked, they don't seem like they've won the lottery in the paranormal world you would be skipping naked down the street to show everybody that footage, if you caught that. And they, oh, well, you can see right through it. Sort of. But for me, they don't seem happy enough. You know? And I know from some of their previous work, it, it yeah, it, it leaves me leaving more on the side of no, that that's not what they're actually seeing. I mean, there is something there, Possibly a person, I would tend to say. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate that watching some of their other work, it makes me sort of err on the side of caution. The shirt, no, that's just in the bin. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say no. If they got that, they would be skipping down the road, and I, it's not they're happy, not happy enough. They just seem more shocked than anything. So no, not for me. Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, Destination Fear. Led by paranormal aficionado Dakota Layden, the team faces several distressing situations at the Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Though not a singular moment, the crew stumbles into a few consecutive ones that keep even the most iron willed viewer on their toes. The tension builds as Tanner and Dakota survey each floor. Eventually, they're startled by the unmistakable sound of a door creaking to a close. What the hell is that? Dude, that was like a high, like, squeak of, like, a door or something. You notice how the spooky music sound, makes it sound Tanner ten times worse than it is. mass on his thermal camera, alerting the pair that they're not alone. What was that? What? What? Dude, I just saw a black mass. A black mass? Dude, it was like, I don't even know. It was just like a black circle. On your thermal on your night vision? On my thermal. On the thermal. That means it's freezing cold. What's worse, Alex gets a disturbing call from Tanner. Except Tanner doesn't have his phone. What? Tanner? What is that? The team scrambles to find the prank caller to no avail, leaving viewers tantalized and terrified about what lurks in the asylum's halls. What happened? Dude, I have no freaking clue. Where's your phone? No. So far in Paranormal Investigating, ghosts are able to manipulate electronic equipment. That is fact. They can. 
uh, apps and things like that, they already come preloaded with certain words that ghosts can use, ghost spirits, whatever you want to call them, to manipulate so they can put sentences together. Never, ever have I seen a ghost ring somebody, or a spirit, sorry, ever, or know how to operate electronic equipment. If anything, they are afraid of it because they don't understand it. So for me, that's a dead no. Um, no, I mean, I didn't see a black mass as well in that particular clip. I mean, there might have been a cold spot. It looked like the side of the building. So where the windows and the damp walls would have been. And certainly there was no black mass that I saw of. So for me, it looks like another one of them shows where they run around screaming when they see a ghost or think they've seen a ghost for TV. You know, which does get ratings, but it's not proper paranormal, unfortunately. So for me, no, two down. Eight, jumping saucepan. Help, my house is haunted. When it comes to hauntings in the household, this UK trio are master investigators. While responding to paranormal claims related to an unassuming cottage, the team sits down with know. a miniature cast iron stove set that has reportedly been moving on its own. To their surprise, one of the tiny pans jumps up, touching Jane's palm. Is there something attached to this object? Jump. Did that move or was it your hand? I didn't touch it. Some fans speculate whether this one is authentic, but the crew makes a point of allaying questions by showing multiple angles and attempting to replicate the instance. Though they don't get another response by the alleged spirit, the jump scare was definitely creepy. It looks like it, ju it jumped. It jumps. You Wait. see it jump. Number seven. The problem is the camera's behind it. There are numerous experiments which Ralph has tried so he can show how things get debunked that would cause that to happen. Heat is one. Uh, you can't actually see what her hand is passing over. Yes, it's the saucepan, but because it's behind, you can't get a good sight of it. This is why you always have two or three cameras so you can get every angle, just in case. It's unfortunate. I know they said they tried to debunk by going over every possible angles after the event. If they've got cameras to do it, then why not do it during the event or before it's happened? Why afterwards? Why only one camera angle from behind? That leads me to think they've got something to hide. So we'll say no. Woman in Black, The Haunted Hunts. In the second season premiere of this UK paranormal series, the investigators begin their multi-episode exploration of the famously haunted city of Chester. After learning about potential ghost sightings at the Chester it's Rose, the, the team one, set up camp in hopes of spotting place, one. Though doubtful of seeing an actual ghost, Danny readies a full spectrum camera. And yet, as a perfect primer for what the city has to offer, he captures a photo of a mysterious woman in a black dress. Knowing the streets were empty and the photos so. preceding and following this shot did not achieve the same results, it's possible he found an unsuspecting apparition out in the open. Even ghosts need to get out sometimes. That picture. Number six. Could that be a woman in a black dress? Who knows? We didn't take, uh, we didn't see the picture taken. We don't know who was there. Time of day, uh, anything that's happening outside, conditions, anything like that. Um, so what are you supposed to take from that, really? Um, it's an intro. This certainly looks like there's some sort of figure in a black dress there, but it could be a figure in a black dress. I wasn't there. We, I, I don't know. It's, you know, it's... If you're broadcasting this as a paranormal thing, then the answer is no. It, well, I mean, it's not 100% no. It, it looks like a no. It looks like a person in a black dress. That's not to say that it's not paranormal, but it's a photograph which uh, photographs can be manipulated like videos. It doesn't show anything of what's happening around. So you've got to be skeptical about it, unfortunately. One of them things. Oh, most haunted. Mm. Flying knife, most haunted. In the first no. of this three-part episodic feature, Yvette Fielding no, no. takes her team to the historic Liar. Stanton Hall. 
Most haunted builds the no. tension from the very start, with possible communications and temperature shifts hinting at constant activity in the building. I'd like to get out of this room. Because we've got... Right. Any time that Fred is on that camera or off the camera, it's fake. 100%. I've got a clip, or I had a clip, it was saved on my old Skybox actually, uh, where the camera's panning round and there's him, I think it's Carl and Darren, in the room, and the camera literally sees him with a spoon in his hand, throwing it. It clatters to the ground, like, oh, what's that? And they walk over and find a spoon. He doesn't throw it quick enough to get out the shot of the camera. And that's as low as you can go in the paranormal world. Now, whether the entire team did that or knew about that, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But he put that show into an all-time low. Some people on that, Carl, seems reasonably genuine. Maybe even Yvette, to a certain degree. Some of them don't. He is the biggest faker going, 100%. And we've only just started this. Things falling around. Immediately following a potential sighting that leaves the team uneasy and anxious to find the intruder, they're startled as a large knife seems to be thrown from the wall. Right. That was right by the ladders. That sounded like it was coming from in front of me. While we don't see the knife fly unassisted on camera, we do witness the before and after. It leaves the team visibly shaken, which makes this moment that much more unnerving. Look at that. I knew it. I saw it. I said, look what's behind you. Well, there are flies there as well. There is. It's, not, it's there? not around it. Number five. Well, Fred's speaking, so it's clearly fake. Sorry, guys. Um, when you've caught things like that, you can never ever believe anything that that particular person does again. Like I say, I used to watch my Haunted when it was first out. My son likes it. And I'm not saying the entire show is not genuine. Some of them may be. I still know Carl and Stuart uh, still go out and film. They do YouTube stuff. So some of the team may actually do genuine paranormal investigating. Him, no. If he's on any episode, Discount it straight away, guys. 100%. Sorry. Slithering mass. Paranormal lockdown. 64 hours deep in their stay at the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, Nick, Katrina, and Rob are seemingly joined by a shadowy companion. While investigating the fourth floor, Rob describes a crawling mass creeping against the wall in the distance. What? I thought I saw something move across that back wall. Luckily for him, and the rest of us, he managed to capture the dark figure on camera. Here, so watch it again. So here we are, and it's right here that I noticed that it's moving. And it's sliding right across, right to left. It's unclear what exactly the entity is, but it does seem to be moving. As if that wasn't enough to send shivers up our spines, there's also the knowledge that they'd felt a presence with them beforehand. And Katrina, our cameraman Rob and I are all experiencing a growing paranormal presence concentrated on the fourth floor. Number four. Does seem to be something there moving. It looks like a person to me. Um, I like how they're just far enough away. I'm very skeptical tonight, aren't I? I really apologize. I like they are far enough away so the light just reflects enough to catch that, whatever it is, crawling. Not enough to see exactly what it is. Uh, again, you, you've got to look at it for a sceptical eye. I mean, they are far enough away. Whatever it is, crawling can go from one side to the other and just see in the middle. The light's not bright enough, although the size of that camera, Jesus Christ. If you saw that, or personal point of view, if I saw that, if I'm filming one of our team members and I see that crawling, I am legging it down that corridor to catch it on film. I'm not standing there saying, no, oh, I think I've seen this. I'm off. Because if it's that clear that you've caught it, you go. Because you really want to see it, you know? So the fact that it doesn't do that, there's not enough light, just far enough away. Sorry. Frank Falls, Ghost Hunters. When it comes to paranormal investigations, Ghost Hunters is one of the most recognizable shows in the genre. Their episodes are regularly stocked full of gut-wrenching moments, but few are quite as harrowing as Frank's fall in the first season. Frank, you okay? 
While the team is investigating temperature shifts in the armory's catwalk, the sound man is thrust onto his back from an invisible force. Something just went right through me. He describes the sensations behind the traumatizing act from a sudden coldness to an overwhelming rush of fear. What'd you feel when you got cold? And something just right through, right through the floor, it seems, came up and just took me up and snapped my head back. It took me off. It's one thing to see something spooky in the distance, but it's another to be physically affected by it. Happens in the dark, they've caught it on video. You can't see that either. You're taking somebody's word for it that he's gone cold and he feels like something snapped his neck back and pulled his leg or whatever else. You've got to take his word for it. I don't know him, so I can't. I don't know the situation, so I can't. I don't know the team, so I can't. And I don't know the surroundings, the conditions, anything like that. I can't take his word for it. Unless you can put all these things definitively together, I mean, yeah, there are, you know, if I knew his work and I knew he's a trustworthy source, it would have a different take on it, but I don't. So it sends me the opposite way at the moment until I know more about it. But on face value, it probably fell over. I mean, what else can you say? It looks like he's gone down, but it's so not clear that what's happened. So, no, we'll put that one down as a no as well, I think. During Shadow. Most, oh, haunted. most haunted again. While investigating the Wentworth Woodhouse stables in Rotherham, Carl Red. and Stewart embark on a chase in the main building corridors. After an endless pursuit of the person behind a rattling door, fallen chair, and other unexplained noises, Carl hears clear footsteps in the adjacent hallway. The two attempt to spot their tormentor when a shocked Stewart notices a shadow fleeing down the stairs. What's that? There. I can, oh, I can see it there. Go for it, go for it. Go. See? I'm, I'm right run right towards it. Oh, Hello? They run after the figure, but to their horror, no one's there. While the vanishing entity is scary enough, it's the chase that really creates the heart racing atmosphere that leaves everyone, audience included, uneasy about what lurks in those halls. Been through around this room, there's a dead end. What the hell? I thought Definitely. that was one of our team. It can't be because they're all over there. Numbered. So Fred's not involved in that one. Um, how they reacted is exactly what you would do if you've seen something, you see a shadow person, whatever you want to call it, moving down the bottom. First thing you do is shout out, is that one of your team? No response, you would leg it straight after it, as them two did. Interesting. To me, that's a decent response. And the fact that Fred's nowhere near it fills me with a little bit of intrigue, that one. So, hmm. I'm gonna go 50-50 on that one because it's not clear what Stuart's actually seen, but the reaction, how they go straight for it, hmm, I like that. That's what you should do if you're a proper paranormal investigator. So, I'm gonna draw the line on that one, I think, 50-50. Interesting one. I'd like to know more about it. So I might do a little bit of research on that one. But, hmm, interesting that. Number two, Shattered Glass, Ghost Hunters. The Stanley Hotel is most famous for having inspired the, the Overlook Hotel in Stephen King's The Shining. But it also happens to be home to numerous claims of paranormal activity. Ghost Hunters Jason was no exception to this during his overnight stay in room 401. In the early hours of the morning, Jason woke to the unmistakable sound of his closet door opening. Even more frightening, the glass at his bedside table shattered. After ruling out temperature shifts and a tangible force, the team can only assume something supernatural chipped the glass. This glass actually broke. There's a piece. The hair-raising encounters don't stop there, leaving viewers distressed as the hotel lives up to its horrifying reputation. I'm not sure what happened. Hmm. Strange one. I mean, we don't see what happens to the glass. That's the first thing, which is unfortunate. The next thing, the camera's facing away from the closet. 
Could it be on a latch, which just opens? Yes. Could it be paranormal? Yeah, I suppose. The glass, who knows? If that's tipped over on its side, fell, hit the floor, whatever, it's going to be chipped, it's going to be cracked. So you've got to be sceptical with that one. The closet could be on the latch, could have been opened. The glass, you don't see what happens. So I'm going to err on the side of no, unfortunately, on that one. Ghost Adventures. One, Aaron thrown at Goatman's Bridge. Ghost. Does anyone else find it weird that three paranormal investigators, or four of them, however many there is, spend all this time wandering around a spooky house? And then when a ghost comes out, they scream and run off. I find that odd. Ghost Adventures. The historic site of Old Alton Bridge, sometimes known as Goatman's Bridge, was originally part of a Halloween special. A favorite among paranormal investigators, the bridge and its surrounding area is notorious for supernatural sightings and attacks. It's, it's a safe. bad idea to be up there. It's not safe outside right now. It's also home to the disturbing local legend revolving around the titular goat man. Already anxious about the location, investigator Aaron is inexplicably thrown roughly 20 feet and left disoriented. You all right? What happened? Aaron's bone chilling account of this experience is pretty unsettling on its own. But the atmospheric noise and spooky editing creates a particularly frightening moment. Editing, precisely. So, Whoa, whoa, dude. Sorry. The other crew members are also it. confronted by strange phenomena, making this episode not only memorable, but one that haunts them and fans to this day. I'm looking in here and something came at me and hit me and I literally, boom, and I just, and you know, I was just, hey, I'm going to go look over here. I wasn't what even rolling. Nothing, I don't know. We didn't see it. He didn't see it. So if it was physical, animal at some point. Uh, at some time. If it's not physical, nah, not for me. Not caught on. Everyone's got a camera, but you can't see his camera, what he's seeing. So why don't they play it back and show you? Let's have a look. See if he can A, see what's coming at him, B, the physical movement of when it hits him, where he goes. What's wrong with that? If it's not fake, show us. Again, when they do things like that, it just. It makes me skeptical every single time. So, for even for that one, we have to say no, guys. It's you don't see what happens, and it's camera up, but you don't see the footage. Odd. So, have you got something to hide? It's the reason why they're not showing us. But hey ho. Anyway, uh, that's the end of that one, guys. Uh, that was quite a long one. Enjoyed it though. I think we got one out of the ten where we think possibly uh, and it turned out to be a most haunted one as well I never thought I'd say that Jesus Christ um, yeah. thanks for joining me tonight guys uh, comment like and subscribe uh, if you like us please tell your family and friends and I'll see you on the next video